Hi, welcome to a uh, session of London's Calling called His Master's Voice, Take Command of Einstein Analytics. My name is Skip Sauls. I work on the product team for Einstein Analytics. And with me is Chris Jolly, who's the architect on the team. And we're going to show you a few things today that are brand new. They're actually in pilot in Spring 19. And we're also going to talk to you about where we're going with this in the future. And uh, as part of Salesforce, um, and as part of the Salesforce community, you've probably seen these slides before. We have to tell you, don't make any of your purchasing decisions based upon what you hear today. And uh, we will try to point out what things are in pilot versus what's coming next. Um, nearly everything you'll see today is actually brand new. And we're going to go behind the scenes and go under the covers and show you some of the cool stuff there and show you how this is built on the Salesforce platform. Uh, we'll leave some time at the end for questions, and we'll also be around the rest of the day if you want to ask things. Um, but we have a ton of material here and lots of cool demos to show. So first up, um, we're going to go through a quick intro of what voice means to the industry and what it means to Salesforce. Uh, we'll show some general use cases, kind of what we're trying to approach. And then we'll talk about this thing we call the Commander, which is a technology being built by the team that Chris is the lead of. And then we'll show you some of the clients here, both on the uh, Google Dialog Flows and also uh, a Lightning-based version, and then talk about the future and some additional resources. So a lot of interesting uh, content for you, hopefully. So uh, what is this uh, thing we talk about when we say voice? And uh, you see here the evolution from you know, command lines through your point and click into touch, and now into voice. And most everyone has either a voice device in their house or you've certainly played with it somewhere. Who here has an Alexa Echo or a Google Assistant or a Siri, you know, Apple Home type thing? So you've all played with it at some level. You're certainly familiar with it. It's all over the you know, advertising and so forth. Um, what's different is, is that most of the focus has been on the consumer side of things. You, know, you say, hey, Alexa, set a timer. Hey, Google, what's the temperature? You basically you know, interact with it that way. And those things work very well. Um, if you have any kids in your house, they've certainly gotten used to it. They probably use it all the time. You know, tell me a joke, tell me a story, play a game, that kind of thing. Um, but when you get to the um, enterprise world, the use cases vary a little bit. And there's a difference in the levels of security, the context, and so forth. So um, our goal is to make it so that you will trust voice in the same way you trust using your laptop, using a keyboard and a mouse, or you trust your mobile device with things like Salesforce One. And that's actually tougher than it sounds, and we'll talk to you about some of those issues today. But we're trying to make it so that it becomes a very natural way to interact with Salesforce. And even though we are part of the analytics team, Chris and I actually have a platform background. And everything we build is for the general Salesforce platform. It's not just an analytics focus. It just so happens that analytics has a lot of cool things you can interact with, you know, charts and graphs and uh, data sets and that sort of thing. So what does Salesforce have in terms of Einstein uh, voice? Now, if you were at Dreamforce or you've seen the announcements, you've probably heard of the voice assistant. And this is the device, or this is the app rather, where you can take notes perhaps after a meeting and it will go through and use some uh, speech recognition and it will try to figure out what it is you mean in context and it will create actions and so forth around that. And uh, this is really cool stuff because it does the actual you know, analysis. It is truly in the machine learning realm. And uh, it's a cool app that you can, uh, I think, in pilot right now, I think you can play with it. Um, and the parts of it are rolling out into Salesforce One. And then um, the thing at the bottom here, the voice daily briefings. Um, if you've ever had an Alexa device, you can get a daily briefing which shows like news and weather and things like that. And it starts to be personalized for your experience. Well, the Salesforce daily briefing is personalized for your particular org. And it's looking at your traditional reports and pulling out data and showing you, or showing you things on an Echo Show type device, or it's saying things to you. And this gets your you know, KPIs and things that are relevant for, for your day. And then we're working on the voice analytics that we'll talk about here in just a moment. And then also for the service cloud, there are voice bots uh, that are coming. Uh, I think they're looking at piloting this. And these are, by the way, internal numbers, 220, 218, 216. Some of, you, some of you may know this, but 220 is the summer 19 release. 218 is spring 19. And uh, 216 is winter 19. So uh, you'll hear Chris and I say those numbers sometimes. That's what it maps to. It's just the internal things. Uh, somebody joked recently that a job of PM is translating between the spring 19 to 
uh, two, uh, 18, and I get, I get tripped up by it a lot of times myself. So uh, let's do a quick demo for the Einstein voice analytics. We're going to go back and forth with these. I'm going to try to show these on this device. Uh, however, the audio doesn't seem to be working, which is kind of ironic. So we'll probably use a simulator for this. It's not picking up coming through the uh, uh, little audio thing. But anyway, I'll show this screen here and show you what's going on with this. Um, we'll go into my lightning experience here. And I've got this commander utility bar item here at the bottom, which I don't know if you can see that. But when it pops up, it gives you a command line where you can type in commands. And you can say show dashboard. You can you know, give it all the different commands we understand. But you can also turn on this uh, subscription. And this is a uh, platform event, if you know Salesforce platform events. We're basically subscribing to this. And whenever we get the command from the voice device, we turn around on the server side and we turn that into an action. We say, what are the most likely things you want to do based on what you just said? And we're looking at the Salesforce metadata and data, both on the core side and analytics side, and figuring out what are the most likely things you, you meant there. And we're doing some things like fuzzy matching and so forth, trying to figure out what it is you've said. As you know, voice is a lot less precise than clicking on a link that was generated by something. And then we'll take that action in the client. In this case, it's lightning. And we'll do something and show something on the screen. So I'll do a quick example of this. Let's bring up the assistant. And we'll put it up side by side here in the QuickTime piece. And this is where the audio, I think, does not going to show, but I'll, I'll type it to kind of show you the power of it. And Let's first say, uh, talk to Einstein Analytics. OK, here's the test version of Einstein Analytics. Please log in to Salesforce to use this app. Log in. Log in. So as you see, it's not always so accurate. Log in. To access your Salesforce org, I need to link your Einstein Analytics account to Google. Is that okay? Yes. So for those of you who are devs in the room who've played with this, or even admins who've played with the connected apps, that's what this is. We create a connected app, and we give it the various tokens and so forth. On the Google side, we just register it, and they handle all of this exchange here. So that's the standard Salesforce login dialog. So I'm going to log into my uh, DE org here. And you only do this once. It'll hold that session for a while. Um, it has the standard uh, OAuth you know, uh, expirations and that sort of thing. So it's not like you have to log in every time you use it. Um, because I'm doing this on a test org, I'm oftentimes unlinking and linking and trying things out. And then once you've Hi, got Skip. that in there. Welcome to Salesforce Einstein Analytics. Try saying get help. So I'm going to pause that for a second. So. Um, that high skip, skip is actually coming from my user profile. So it's whatever you have associated with your account there. So we're actually making REST calls on the back end. We're going to show you the, the architecture here in a minute from the Google Dialogflow. We are a platform team. We're very big into API first, everything being REST based, doing everything in Salesforce. This ends up being a very thin client on the Google side. We have uh, just a few of what they call intents and just a few lines of code here to call out to our service. And most of it's handled on the server side. And that means we can also flip over to use Alexa or Siri or Lightning. And we're not tying so much into the client side. Nothing wrong with the clients. It just means you have to have specialized code for everyone. More on that later. So I'm going to tap or talk here and say, get help. And when, the, when you see this little screen here, that screen is generated from Salesforce metadata. So we're getting back the information, the icons and links and that kind of thing. Get help. I can do the following. So I'm going to tap on this right now because this is a touch surface thing that they talk about. So you have touch and voice working equally. And I can get help on viewing a dashboard. You can say the following. You can say the following. View my payment schedule. View dashboard, say, view dashboard, dashboard name twice. where dashboard name is a string. For more details, say help followed by... View my payment schedule. OK, now showing the amortized schedule dashboard. Try changing pages with first page. Next page. OK, now changing to the overview page. OK, so um, what you saw there was 
we are generating the text coming back from Salesforce. We have these things called intents and actions. We can tell you what you want to say next. And we also know something about the context here. So we know something about the, the state or the context, if you will. So we know you're looking at a dashboard. And we know from that dashboard what you can do to that. And you can do navigation. You can do selections and filtering and that kind of thing. So we're trying to make sure that the user can interact with Salesforce in a very natural fashion. And it's not just a bunch of canned responses. Because a lot of early voice stuff was do a bunch of things with intents and so forth. And every time you did it, it called out and did something. This is actually maintaining the state. And the goal is that in the future, you'll wake up in the morning and you kind of interact with your Echo device you know, on your nightstand or your kitchen. And you can say, tell me something about my day in Salesforce or ask some questions of it. And you get in your car and you've got it hooked up via voice, maybe via Siri. You go to your phone and you hook it up via the assistant. You go into a meeting room and you've got a device in there. And you maintain that same context all day so it knows what you've been working on. And if you're looking at something, it can tell you something about that. It's not just randomly trying to do commands. And important, you're not resetting back every time. Um, one thing I'm very passionate about is that analytics should work in your app and not be a thing you have to go and physically do separately. So we'll come back to more demos in a second. Let me go to the slides again and just show you a few things here. <clears throat> so I'm going to cover a couple quick use cases. Then we're going to have Chris talk about some of the architecture that powers this and show you how this fits together. So we're targeting what we call this voice-driven analytics. And this is sort of a high-level view of what you were just looking at showing the actions on Google. And if you're curious, that's basically Node.js running inside of their cloud. And whenever you talk to this device or you talk to the physical device, it sends up a, basically a wave sample or some sort of sample up to the cloud, and they process it very rapidly. And you'll notice that with the smaller devices, they've got like one microphone. The bigger devices have more microphones. So that's why you pay more. You get more mics, more speakers, and that kind of thing. And they get more accurate results. And what they're doing is they're trying to figure out what you're saying. And they do it with some sort of context. You can, you can either provide context or you can go with the raw context. We're looking at how we can say, what is the context for your Salesforce org? Because your org is different from someone else's. Your region is different. Your language is different. We're going to see if we can figure out ways to push that back down to these other clouds and make it so you as an admin or developer don't have to think about all those gory details. So uh, once it figures out what I'm asking here, we're sending it to Commander. We're sending in a transcript of this along with some other intent information. And we process that, and then we figure out what to do with it next. And what we're doing is calling a invocable action, again, another standard Salesforce feature. And we're typically calling out to um, a query via SQL, S-A-Q-L, to this Einstein Analytics Engine. So this is what powers it. And this query is generated from what you just said here. So we peel out things like Success Manager and Spencer. Success Manager being the uh, field name. And we know from the context they're on an account. And then Spencer is the name I just said. And it actually maps to an account name, which is, in this case, Spencer LLC. And you'll see that demo uh, shortly. And then we get the results back. And then we send it back to the Commander, which sends it back to the actions on Google here, to the uh, dialogue flow. And we can generate this sort of response, and the Google device will then say it or show it, such as it may be. Now, uh, to kind of leap forward, whenever you send the response back, you're sending it back typically with a JSON payload that might have some embedded uh, code called SSML, Speech Synthesis Markup Language. And we're looking at how we can leverage our, our uh, transform engine to let you, as an admin or developer, create a set of templates here and then generate it for the device here in a transparent fashion. So you can say, well, the customer is on a Alexa or on a Google device or Siri, and you've got one representation in Salesforce, and you're not trying to think about all the details of each individual device. And that's the kind of thing we think is valuable to our customers because we want to work in Salesforce, not necessarily go to every single individual uh, assistant. So um, a slightly different version, we were just looking, looking at the dashboards. In this case, we're not actually going out to the analytics engine. We're basically creating a, a platform event from the metadata. We're, so we're looking at the dashboards, the data sets, and that sort of thing, not necessarily running a query. And the platform event is being consumed by something remotely, in this case, the uh, lightning experience, and it's showing the thing here. So this is the very command-centric thing. And we call this our conference room use case. 
And the idea is that you could start a meeting and you'd either have a device running in the room or in the data center. You might invite Einstein, for example, to join as a virtual assistant in your uh, Google Meet or your GoToMeeting or Amazon Chime, et cetera. <laughs> And everybody in the room would be interacting with that assistant, and the assistant would use the voice ID matching and say, I can do this on behalf of this user. And we would do this through standard Salesforce security and sharing rules and so forth. And this is important because we don't want to have, say, Mark Benioff in a conference room, and he's showing his you know, dashboard, and somebody runs in and says, show everybody's bonuses, and it suddenly pops up on the screen. If that happens, that breaks the trust, obviously, and that's just the extreme case, but that's the kind of thing we have to think about. So we would most likely uh, look at this voice confidence, this voice matching coming from these devices and map that into the Salesforce world. And just to get kind of uh, technical with that, they give you a confidence level which is like 30% or 50%, and oftentimes it's a number or it's a percentage. We'll map that into some value that makes sense inside of Salesforce and let an admin go say that you need to have this confidence level in order to take this action. So you can imagine a read is less confidence than a, um, uh, a write, and a delete might require a two-factor off type thing where you go back to the phone. So um, we have to make sure that we don't roll this thing out and people get really mad about it, because I think if you do that, uh, you lose your opportunity for, for years. And then finally, um, this is the actual conference room case in action where we're interacting with it the same way, and I don't think we have the picture here, but we've got some of the demos where we put a little Einstein avatar in here. And you would just invite that to your meeting. And it would run as a, what we call a synthetic user in your org. And it would be invited to the meeting. Uh, we're looking at how we can do that now with some of the conference software. Okay, so I'm going to have Chris go through the commander architecture and describe some of what's behind the scenes of the demo you've seen and some of the things we've been talking about. And I, I can push the slides for you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Thanks, Skip. Uh, yeah, so real, real high level. Um, what we're looking at here is uh, this is out on the left-hand side. And as far as we're concerned, we're actually not doing any of the voice synthesis ourselves. What we're really taking in is the natural command line. It might as well be just text that you typed on your keyboard. Um, but what we do want to do is make it easy to provision these things. So whether you're using Alexa or Google or Siri, we can provision those devices and e easily hook that up to our system. But at the end of the day, as far as we're concerned, they're interpreting the voice, they send the text over to us, and then that's what we really interpret. And from that, we can do a bunch of different stuff. We can do these things called actions, and we'll talk about some custom actions. But we, first and foremost, since we're the analytics team, but this is, as Skip said, we originally came from the platform team, so we were building this all on the platform and making it open such that um, you, know, you guys can extend it and, and, and use it for other things. But the idea is to um, drive analytics, um, drive things through platform events so you can broadcast actions, work with S objects, work with AP Apex, and then this will be your hook into writing your own custom actions. Uh, one thing to note, all these actions will be performed on your behalf. So really when Skip is talking to the voice, Ultimately, that makes its way down to the, the you'll, you'll go to the next slide, actually. Um, this is API, and I want to dig down into the API, but one of the things, the first thing you do ultimately is, this is the REST API, so we're fully open. These are our, our public, versionable uh, API. Um, but the first thing you do is you do a get, and you do a get on the actions, and what you would normally do is, and we'll see this in, a, in the next slide, but on there would be the raw text. And ultimately then that would send down some actions that we met, get a match on. And ultimately, but my point was, the action is being performed on behalf of the user. So it's always coming from your device on your behalf that you're authenticated in. So it's not, you couldn't just mimic someone's voice into Alexa and perform an action. Your, your, your device had to be authenticated into Salesforce or your laptop and it's performing on that behalf. Um, so just to, to kind of go over these really, really quickly, um, again, we have full CRUD operations on this, um, but the actions are uh, things that you would, um, like I said, you can, you can perform an action, but you can also create actions, and we'll show you some of the metadata around that. Um, we have intents, and intents are show me a dashboard, uh, change the page on this dashboard, those kind of things. So you can 
create your own intents, um, and then you, your intents, as we'll see, have kind of keywords in them that ultimately get passed to your action, and that's the kind of the, the thing that you will uh, trigger your particular action on it. And those things that get passed are parameters, so you can add parameters to your action. Ultimately, so natural language goes in here, actions come out, and then you actually perform the action on this. So you take what the output of that, because the output of that um, can maybe might have five hits and you get different confidence in intervals and you may want to have the user select one and ultimately you perform the action on that. So go ahead. So uh, yeah, a lot of JSON here, kind of a lot of code. I know this isn't a developer course, but back to my point, you do an action with a query. That is our actual text that the person said that came from the Google device or Amazon and then this is what we would get back. In this case, we got back uh, one requ one request, or um, and we have a uh, an overall rating on this. The actual uh, text that went in was show dashboard, but we matched with view dashboard. Um, so this was your request. This is ultimately what matched. We have a 75% confidence interval. We actually only found one action to come back. So then we would invoke that. Um, you would invoke that by invoking that URL. So this is what Skip's demo on his, uh, on his laptop is actually doing. Um, we're building the back end for this. This is open API for you guys to call, but he's actually putting the front end on this. We actually do have um, some uh, lightning components that do all this ourselves, but if you want to go in and create your own devices, you can. We have a CSERF token that makes sure that this request is only valid for a little bit of time. This should be kind of opaque as, um, because it's, it's, you shouldn't be really messing with this. This is just the payload that you are sending on behalf of that to perform that action. Um, right here, we have a uh, view analytics dashboard action. I believe we have four actions right now. Um, view a dashboard, update a dashboard, so you can do a selection change, a filter change, or a page change on a dashboard. We also have um, a, uh, an S object action, so you can you know, open an account, close the account, uh, set a status on account, things like that. You can change fields on accounts or S objects, any S object. And then we have a custom action, which is really um, a, uh, Right here is an invocable action, and these are these are standard invocable actions within Salesforce. You write an Apex class, you give it a standard annotation there. Um, these are the parameters. This is all in XML because I'm actually showing the metadata version of this. If you're familiar, if you're a developer, you're familiar with metadata API versus uh, our REST API. The REST API is always JSON. You can update these either way but typically you would have a set of um, XML files that you could deploy. Uh, so this is my custom action here. These are my parameters that I'm interested in. I put them in my intents. I actually have two intents. Uh, this shows me I've got a default value for that, but then these would be required values that I would have to pick up. So at the end of the day, my action is getting these three parameters. Um, we're working on things to make this a lot easier so I don't have to have two intents. I can just put like an or condition there and a brace around that um, just to make these easier to author. Um, we're looking at maybe specifying words to, you know, really, you know, trigger on um, as, a, uh, you know, as opposed to just, uh, we're, we're always looking at better ways to, to match this stuff and improve this stuff. Um, but the idea here is this is all open. Um, it's available and extensible. So, um, And with that, uh, I'm going to give it back to Skip. He's going to actually talk about how he invoked a, a custom action. And I believe this is to do some fuzzy type kind of matching. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is actually a, a cut down version of an Apex class, an Apex invocable action. And we see the same parameters that we were taking uh, in the definition here. So you see here, uh, the request has the uh, object name, object type, and field label. So those map to that intent. And I'm actually not going to show you all the code here. It's actually too big for the slide. But basically, we're going to go through here and return back a response that has something in it. In this case, it's a hello world type thing. And normally, this has extra code in here. 
This is where we're playing with things like fuzzy matching. So if the user says Spencer, we know they actually meant Spencer LLC. And some of the things we're doing on the analytics side is looking at how we can push more and more of that into the analytics engine, which as our shirt shows, oh, our saw shirts show, um, you can get a billion rows of data and they're very fast at dealing with large amounts of data. Uh, we can sift through you know, bi billions of rows in a few seconds, um, whereas with standard core, you know, you're gonna hit a limit of a few thousand, tens of thousands of things. So we're looking at how we can make that even quicker to make the voice response more natural. So um, the platform events, um, again, don't worry about all the code here. This has all been generated. But this is the payload that we're sending to the client on the lightning side in this case. And it can pull this out and know that it's going to view a dashboard. And this includes things like you'd expect, uh, the dashboard information like IDs and names and descriptions. Um, this is probably more than we need right now. This is, this is just a response back from the, the REST API pushed into the, uh, the payload. Um, but the, the goal is that someone who's writing a client can take it and do something with it. And it doesn't have to be lightning. It could be anything else out, out there. You could take it and show something on an Echo Show device. You could do something on an Apple TV. Um, the, it's all open, so you can take it and use this data and metadata. And if you want to, pull things out and use it for other API calls. So a quick um, overview of a client here. Um, we use the um, Google Assistant, um, also known as Dialogflow, um, to build that little demo we saw there. Um, you can also build it on Alexa, you can build it on Siri, and we'll show you the Lightning version in a second. If you were here last year at London's Calling, I showed an early version of some of this using Alexa for Business. And uh, uh, it's basically the same thing. Um, we as a platform team don't really care. Salesforce might have partners and that sort of thing, and you know, someone is the, the friend and partner at the time, but uh, our goal is to build it so that you can use any of these things, um, including whatever comes along next from some other uh, vendor. <coughs> so just a quick overview of some things on the Google side. They have similar notions of things like actions, intents, entities, uh, these webhooks, which are basically the Node.js call uh, code. And then they're talking to Salesforce through the REST APIs and the connected app. So doing some OAuth, and most of it actually passes things into here in the commander. Commander figures out the intents and actions and then calls into the back end or sends things back to Google. And a couple of screens here. We can look at this live, but I'll just go through this briefly. Um, when you deal with intents on a lot of systems, they'll say you need to have a certain number of intents to train the model. And I find that frustrating because I'm like, I don't have 50 intents or 150 or 200. My model's not that big, but they want that because they're building their thing. So on our side, we're trying to make it so you don't have to have all those intents. You can have just a few. We'll do a, the things we can on the platform side to figure it out and do less on the client. So in this case, we've got a little pass through that says, let me do a login and then let me do some things like get the state and so forth. But most of it's passing things through directly. Um, we appreciate the vendors that like to pass the transcript to us. Some vendors are very funny about where they whether they want you to have that voice transcript, um, but we can deal with either the raw intents or the, the transcript. And then the webhook fulfillment says, when I get something like get user info, call out to the webhook here by that little toggle. And the webhook is just code. Um, it's Node.js. Um, this is showing a little bit of the function to call the commander. And under the covers, we're just calling out to a REST API. And you know, we're getting the current version from the current user. But this is the same API Chris was showing, Einstein conduit actions, filter group, et cetera, et cetera. And basically putting in the current query to find something there. So we're doing exactly what Chris was showing. You can actually take Workbench and do the same kind of thing. You could do it on the commit. You could use curl. Um, we don't really care where it's coming from as long as you have a valid Salesforce session. And then um, <clears throat> for the handling of it, this is where it can vary on the devices because you have different capabilities. And with all of these um, voice assistants, you can say, does it have um, a, a screen? Does it have a surface, as they like to say? Or does it have voice or text? And what you can do is you can tailor that output. And right now, in the, the demo version, it does a lot of the work in the client code. And that's where we'll try to move more and more of that into Salesforce. And the, the ultimate goal is that you as an admin just pick a template and say, generate that. You won't have to write all this code and worry about whether it's an Alexa device or a Google, et cetera. 
And then um, there's something called SSML, Speech Synthesis Markup Language. Um, this is actually pretty cool. It is an XML style format, but you don't have to write an entire document on it. You're basically putting in little tags around blocks of text. And the cool thing is it has annotations for uh, enunciating something, slowing things down, you know, pronounce it as a date, email, et cetera. <clears throat> so it's actually kind of cool. That's also where we'd like to generate that because even though it's a standard, it's a little different between the different devices and they don't all support all the capabilities, but I suspect that will evolve over time. And that's how you'll get the more natural responses back out of it. So you, you know, it's so-and-so at something.com instead of just reading it out literally. And um, that's the kind of thing also we'd like to generate from the Salesforce metadata. We obviously know what the types are. So we could use that to figure out what these are, the templates, and not have you do it uh, so explicitly every time. And then this is the simulator. <clears throat> I may show this in a second, but this is showing that response. So um, this is, you know, okay, now showing the image test to dashboard, try changing pages with. So uh, little bits of this were things that I wrote in code, but it's all generated based upon the Salesforce metadata. And this is kind of weird now because it gets all the pages and tries to give you links, a little over, overbearing. But the pages coming back are from the actual dashboard we're looking at. So page Einstein, page Cody, page Appy, et cetera. And you'll see that in the demo in a second. Those came from the dashboard definition. Thank you. So let's take a quick look at that. And what I'll do here now is uh, bring the same thing back up again. And um, we'll go, we'll actually show it here on the screen again with the uh, simulator or the uh, actual device. Talk to Einstein Analytics. All right, getting the test version of Einstein Analytics. Hi, Skip. Welcome to Salesforce. Try saying, get help. Get Show dashboard image test 2. Okay, now showing the image test 2 dashboard. Try changing pages with Page Appy. Page Appy. Okay, now changing to the intro page. Page Einstein. Okay, now changing to the intro page. Okay, well, I'm going to type this so that it will get the actual page. So this is where the voice thing sometimes is kind of funny, but um, there's a Cody page, I know. I thought I knew. Well, you know it's a real demo now because it's, uh, it's actually sitting there thinking. Well, let's flip over to the simulator and uh, try it there. So we'll also do the same talk to. Let's split this over into a different window so we can bring up Salesforce again. And the simulator actually links to the same account, so I don't have to go in and log in again to the uh, same thing. All right, let's get the test version of Einstein Analytics. Hi, Skip. Welcome to Salesforce. Try saying, get help, get user info, or... Okay, now showing the image test 2 dashboard. Try changing pages with first page, previous page, next page, last page, page intro. Page Cody. I'm not sure where H&M came from. That's obviously some, some kind of context thing. I did not understand. Yes, Please I, try I again or say get help. Yeah, so it's, it's getting a little... I did uh, not understand. Yeah. Please try again or say get... Page Cody. Just... Okay, now changing to the intro page. Well, this used to work, so... Clearly I've done something to... Okay, now changing to the intro page. Well, we'll do this from the lightning version in a second, but it's supposed to change pages to Cody. <clears throat> so apologies for the demo. Um, what we, no, no, it's actually, actually, that's one of the things we've done is to actually uh, treat it all as lowercase. And we do some fuzzy matching, basically saying uh, get the Levenstein distance between the text as well as some other things. And we move, kind of mush it together and say, what's the best match there? So, but you're, you're right that that can cause issues. Um, so we'll come back to that with the lightning piece in a second. Um, but 
this usually works until I actually try to demo it. So, okay, so um, real quick back in the slides, we've got a few more minutes left. <coughs> okay, so on the lightning side, we actually um, have built a lightning version of it, but I'll tell you that's kind of a special thing here um, in a second. So we have a um, standard lightning component we ship, this uh, commander we saw earlier. And then we have a voice input piece, which kind of mimics what you've seen in the Google piece, but it runs inside of the utility bar. And um, what's important to point out is that this thing is dealing with the same exact code. In fact, the original Lightning version took the Node.js code and moved it into the controller and helper on the Lightning side and ran that. We had to make different calls for some of the APIs and so forth. And who here has dealt with trying to call a REST API call from Lightning? Anybody? So if you ever try to do that, you'll find you can't do it. So what we had to do is kind of optimize this. And um, we actually include a visual force page inside of an iframe. And in visual force, you can say, you know, allow, or in the iframe, we say allow microphone to turn on that feature. And this is where it says, do you want to let the microphone work? So that's kind of a special case here. As we go forward, we'll move more and more, more of those into API components inside of Lightning and get rid of the need for this. But for right now, it's sort of the, uh, way we can enable the voice and microphone. And this is just a, a VF page, which is mostly JavaScript. There's very little in the way of UI here. But this is calling the same exact code that we saw over on the Google side. And um, the difference is, is on the Node.js side, you have the REST API. Over here, you have the XML HTTP request. But otherwise, it's very similar. So to look at the Lightning client in the last couple minutes here, um, let's go back over here. And we're still subscribed, so I'm going to bring up voice input, and we click enable speech. And if I had not done this earlier, it would have asked me, will you allow for this sort of thing? And we had to click enable speech because Chrome just changed this so that it won't enable speech unless you explicitly push a button. And this is part of their uh, security and trust type stuff because there were pages that would open up and open up a microphone, and people were freaking out because it were, was recording stuff, and they didn't know it. So this gives you a more explicit option. And with this, you can pick you know, different voices, like uh, we were playing with this earlier. Uh, we can go to ENGB and pick this. This is a test. And so you, know, you can pick whatever you'd like to inside here. This is a test. And then um, you have two things here. You can do a text input or the microphone. And we'll see if the microphone picks up here. Oops, you know what? It probably was just doing that. Show dashboard image test two. Okay, now viewing dashboard image test two. Page Einstein. Okay, now changing to the Einstein page. Page Cody. Page Cody. Page Cloudy. Okay, now changing to the Cloudy page. So um, what you'll find is if you look at the logs, it sometimes get, gets confused and says P-A-I-G-E, page as in a, a, a name. And it's especially looking at the context of it. And sometimes it thinks it's a last name, so it treats the whole thing as a name. Um, so we're trying to do more fuzzy matching on that end. Um, it's one of those things that we want to try to solve at the platform level and not require you to deal with this. But it'll also be things we can train. And our goal is to let you personalize it. So if we look at a dashboard and I call something foo, and you call it bar, but it's the same thing, we can track that and log it. And the next time you say, show the foo dashboard, it shows what you meant. So it's a do what I mean type service. And that's the kind of thing that we think about in the enterprise is very valuable because it takes it beyond what you get at the consumer level. You know, And not, not to knock the consumer stuff, but a lot of it is kind of toy-like. And we're saying we need to treat this as a true serious input. OK, um, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, let me bring this back up. <clears throat> so a quick thing on the roadmap. Um, we are in pilot right now, but it's very limited. We will probably have a broader pilot in the summer 19 release. Um, and that'll be one where you can do more with it. As Chris said, we're doing a lot of things on better expressibility for the intents, uh, more actions and that sort of thing. But we're still treating it as an app that you can take and install and kind of get to that one-click install type thing. Hopefully you don't do a lot of setup work. Um, once we get into the uh, winter 20, which, boy, that's really hard to say, winter 20, that seems like forever in the future, doesn't it? Um, so uh, once we get into that and we get to Dreamforce and that sort of thing, 
we will most likely have a more complete GA type offering. So that's what we'll be building over the course of the summer. If you're interested in the pilot, contact your Salesforce, SE, TE, PAM, AE, et cetera, and they can get you signed up for that. And then um, additional resources, just to point out, um, at this link here, we have a page that will have links to all of our analytics content from today. And um, uh, addition, additionally, links to uh, different training courses and that sort of thing for analytics. And then um, a few links here. And, th and these slides will be made available. You don't have to, have to take pictures of them. We'll, we'll give you the whole deck. And these all have links inside here to different trailheads, quick starts, and that sort of thing. Um, we're very passionate about analytics and the platform, and we want you to try these things out and learn it. Um, if you haven't already done trailheads, you get a you know, free org which has some sample data for playing around with analytics. So it's easy to get in there and play with it. Um, we fully support Salesforce DX. We're very passionate about that because we think it's the right way to actually build things. So you can actually take it and build things with the uh, uh, CLI plugin. In fact, we're one of the first plugins out there. You just install it directly from SFDX. And with that, um, I think we're at time. So uh, we'll move over into the demo jam. And please find us during the day for Q&A. And we'd like to thank you very much. And we hope to see you later on today in the conference. Thank <clears throat> you.